Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming to my talk. Today, I will talk about our work entitled Unsupervised Lifelong Learning with Curricula. This work has been done by a collaboration between the University of Louisiana at Lafayette and the Hebei University of Technology. Let's first look at the background. Multitask learning has been the driving force for developing the versatile machines, which has been deemed as a key step towards the so-called strong AI that can perform multiple different tasks that, by the way, grow in knowledge from those tasks as we human do. Indeed, as we human beings can master multiple different tasks with a single mindset, it is believed that a machine should also be able to do so. In the context of machine learning, dealing with multiple disparate tasks convey immediate benefits in the sense that it allows us to uncover interesting patterns. For example, when diagnosis the patient, suppose we do not only have their clinical data from various medical service providers, but also we have their geometrical, uh, geographical information and their cyber world behavior, such as the social media browser histories. Then we can ask um, machines about interesting questions, such as is diabetes less common in living area with more open spaces? or is Alzheimer less suffered by whom open watch comedies? Note, such kind of questions will remain hidden if we do not handle the multiple learning tasks simultaneously. A common practice to build such a multitask machine is to realize uh, an optimization object here. Uh, suppose we have n tasks, and uh, each of which have a certain data points with their labels. The idea is when we train each classifier for an individual task, but meanwhile, we impose a regularized term to encourage those classifiers to be similar with each other or by sharing similar parameters. It's, it's more like we enforce a machine to use a uh, one man set to perform well in different tasks. Uh, as long as the obtained classifier have uh, shared parameters, we can see that uh, this converted result is our successful model. However, a prominent drawback of this practice that is that it requires complete labels from all tasks, which can only be provided by the human laborers. Uh, it incurs uh, costly, time-consuming, and laborious efforts. Also, such a multitask learning objective requires that all tasks need to be ready beforehand, but in practice, it is often the case that the tasks will become in sequence, while new tasks constantly emerge and cost for handling. In such cases, the current multitask machines need to be over and over again retraining from scratch, leading to great waste of computational and uh, time resources. Therefore, in this work, we mainly investigate can a machine after initially trained to perform lifelong learning in an unsupervised environment. What is the motivation? To explore the question, we draw insight from human learning activities again. First, we need to solve the label problem. We ask, do we humans always need a teacher to tell us what is the ground truth during our learning activities? Actually, no. It is usually the case that we first learn from a teacher in a one-shot fashion to get some preliminary knowledge. Then we are able to learn other tasks in a self-teaching manner. To overcome the labeling reliance problem, one may think to adapt the unsupervised domain adaptation techniques to transferring the knowledge from the initially labeled task to the following tasks in an easy, in an each and every fashion. Consider we have two tasks, T1 and T2, that have different data distribution while the labels are available in T1 only. The key idea of UDA is to discover a shared latent subspace from T1 T2 using feature alignment. A mapping from the original task to the latent space is learned independently until the mapped data from different tasks are non-distinguishable in the latent space. Then, intuitively, the classifier works in T1 should also work well in T2. But the hope of adapting UDA to work in our scenario is that the two tasks cannot be too disparate. Unfortunately, such hope is not likely to always hold, because given a series of tasks, there must exist some task with data distribution very different from the original labeled environment. In this case, it is difficult to find a mapping function with a properly chosen complexity that can tell us which tasks 
the knowledge could be transferred and uh, which is in which it is not. If we, by coincidentally, if we choose a too simple function, then this function is not capable to capture the commonality between two tasks, even being slightly different. It will tell us all tasks are disparate and uh, no useful information can be transferred from the original task. Then our model fails. If we choose a too complex mapping function, then it is too capable of extracting the commonality. But at the meantime, because we do not see the label from the target task that we want to transfer, we do not know even if sometimes the discriminating uh, pattern of the target task has been changed. So in this case, we can think it overfits to the original task that we can see the labels. This phenomenon is known as negative knowledge transfer. So if the complexity of the mapping function is not properly cho chosen, this negative knowledge transfer will be incurred and making prominent uh, prediction errors in the target task. This shortcoming of entailing labels motivates us to propose a new lifelong learning paradigm termed unsupervised lifelong learning with curricular, and the crux lies in the overcoming catastrophic forgetting without the labeling information. We again to build our model by drawing insight from the human learning behavior. Think about how we are educated. We learn lessons never in an arbitrary order actually, but we learn lessons in a well-designed curriculum. It's like when we learn in math, we start from simple algebras, and then we gradually move to the most sophisticated subjects. Similarly, when a machine deals with multiple tasks, why do not organize those tasks in an easy to hard ordering? In this way, the learner or the machine can gradually become more knowledgeable from the easy tasks. Where we say easy, we mean that the task is similar to the originally labeled task. Then, after being more knowledgeable, the learner can better handle the difficult or disparate tasks without incurring the negative knowledge transfer. Here is our design. At first, we only have one labeled task, and the learner will store this task in memory. A task organizer will look ahead for a few steps. For example, here we look ahead for four tasks into a buffer. Then the distance between each task in buffer and uh, the memorized data will be measured. The organizer orders the task in a curriculum from the smallest distance task to the most far away one. Then the organizer look one more task ahead and redo the distance calculation. As such, since the task being the closest to the stored data, we are safer to exploiting the feature alignment or the domain adaptation to propagate the labels to it. The remaining question is how to measure the distance among the tasks. Here, our key idea is to quantify the easiness of extracting the latent space where the features are aligned. That is, if we train a discriminator that tries to classify the data by their task membership, which means that we now do, we now do not care the learning target. We simply mix up the data from two tasks and classify which data points from which. Then, if the criminator cannot distinguish the data by their membership, we consider the latent space is captured very successfully. Clearly, for two similar tasks, this space can be so easily captured, so a simple discriminator can do it. In contrast, between two disparate tasks, the discriminator will be very difficultly learned because we now actually find cannot find a space that makes the two tasks data indistinguishable. In our work to make the discriminator complexity easily measurable, we use neural nets to build the discriminator. As we treat the neural nets architecture as a learnable semantic, if a neural net is learned to be complex and deep, then discovering a latent space to make the two tasks indistinguishable is difficult, which means that the two tasks are disparate. On the contrary, if the neural net is simple and shallow, then two tasks must be quite similar so that their features can be easily aligned in a latent space. To realize our idea, we propose an elastic domain adversarial net called the Shorten Eden in short which can adjust its depth in accordance with the easiness of capturing the latent space. 
the key idea of Eden design is that different from the normal neural nets that only uses the output from the last hidden layer, Eden connects the output or from output from all hidden layers to the data membership. Then Eden exploits a hedging mechanism to tune the weight of different layers. The higher the weight, the more important the role that the current layer plays in extracting the latent feature space. As such, Eden is able to adapt its depths in accordance with the distance between the input task and the task it has learned. Here we give a toy example to show that Eden really behaves as we desired. Here, three tasks, T0, T1, and T5, are visualized in a 2D space. We can clearly see that T0 and T1 are more similar than T5. We plot the widths of the layers of the trained Eden. From the plots, we can see that from the middle, when learning T0 and T1, the shallow layers dominate. So the learned Eden is really shallow means that capturing the latent space between T0 and T1 is very easy. In the right panel, the thing is different. We observe that the weight of the Eden converges at deep layers, indicating that only a deep, complex network can discover a latent space from T0, for T0 and T5. This finding just by our intuition and key idea. Now let's see the experiment. We conduct the experiment on five real-world dataset as well as a synthesized one. The first real dataset is uh, made up from the MNIST uh, dataset, we, which call it uh, MNIST Rainbow, where we use different color maps and uh, uh, spatial turns to create different tasks. The second real-world task is the uh, Amazon product review, where we use a review from different products as different learning tasks, and uh, in this, Example, we can see the word toy conveys uh, different semantic meanings in different tasks. For example, in uh, the product of jewelry and in the product of headphones, uh, when you're saying it's like a toy, it's more like uh, to say that this thing is too cheap, it's not worth buying. But in the product of baby uh, usage, when you say a toy, it's, it's more like a, a neutral thing that do not convey any sentiment meanings. Uh, the result confirms that our approach can beat the state-of-the-art unsupervised lifelong learning competitors and can achieve comparable performance to the supervised counterparts. In terms of efficiency, since our mother needs to organize a curriculum, extra trial time is quite expected. But we really reorder the task at each iteration. The algorithm would be quite in efficient as shown by the blue bars, it takes a uh, much longer time for the work clock running times. Mm, to reduce the time trade-off, we let the all task organizer to jump certain tasks and reuse the previous learned distances. With small trade-off of accuracy, we can observe that our algorithm can achieve comparable or similar uh, work clock runtime performance with the other method as shown by the rightmost green bars. We define a new metric termed the forward transfer error to validate whether the curriculum organized by our algorithm is beneficial. In general, the smaller the error, the more knowledgeable the learner becomes after learning a task. We can see decreasing trends in all data sets. This means our curriculum truly helps to learner to gain its knowledge and get ready for the original disparate tasks. To summary, uh, we have made three contributions in this work. First, we exploit a new lifelong learning setting, and the key is to how to uh, train a self-learning uh, machine for the future tasks without the label supervision. Second, we design a new learning algorithm termed the ULLC with its securities in it can learn on the fly accurately, it needs a one-time labeling, only and it remembers the knowledge to better the future learning. Uh, third, we have analyzed the theoretical properties, uh, which can be referred to our paper and supplementary. And uh, we have carried out extensive experiments to validate the viability and the effectiveness of our proposal. Uh, thank you for listening. Uh, and uh, I'm willing to take up any questions if, uh, if there are any. Thank you.